Welcome to Culture Talk. This is a segment where we talk about culturally relevant topics and how you can use them to start conversations about your faith. I'm joined today with astronomer Hugh Ross. Thank you so much for joining us today, Hugh. Yeah, my pleasure. We're going to be talking about something that actually came in as a social media question, and that is, is there scientific evidence for extra dimensions? So before we dive into that, let's first talk about what is our standard understanding of the dimensions that we experience here? Well, I don't know about you, but in grade <laughs> school, I was taught it was length, width, and height, and mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So four space-time dimensions. So four space-time dimensions, but there's... Apparently, people are talking about extra dimensions. So what right. are these extra dimensions? Well, how we've been able to scientifically establish them is first through the space-time theorems, mm -hmm. which establish that the space-time dimensions of the universe have a beginning. They were created, which implies a causal agent beyond time that creates the universe. What's significant about that is the standard definition for time is that dimension in which cause and effect phenomena take place. So we have cause and effect occurring before mm -hmm. our time even exists, mm -hmm. implying at least the equivalent of a second dimension of time. Mm -hmm. And with respect to space, decades ago at Caltech, they were saying, you know what, we cannot fit in all the symmetries demanded by quantum mechanics and gravity if all we have are three space, time, uh, three space dimensions. Mm -hmm. There must be extra dimensions of space so we got room for all the symmetries. Mm. And for a while they were saying, we know it has to be at least eight dimensions and maybe as many as 26. Wow. After about 15 years, they said, we now know the right answer. Mm -hmm. It's nine total space dimensions. Three that are very large, length, width, and height, mm -hmm. and six that are really tiny. Mm -hmm. And it all comes through what people understand to be unified field theory where the universe begins with a single force, mm -hmm. and as the universe cools from the cosmic creation event, that one unified force separates into two, then three, and the four that exist today. Mm -hmm. And what happens when the first force separates, so that's gravity, that happens when the universe is only a 10 millionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second old. Wow. That's when gravity separates out from the strong electroweak force. And when that happens, nine of the space dimensions that were expanding from the cosmic creation event, three of them continue to expand, mm -hmm. six stop. Mm. So one reason why we don't notice those six, they're no bigger than they were when the universe was 10 to the minus 43 seconds old. So like less than a blink of an eye. I mean, to even try to fathom how quick that was is... Well, to give you an idea, mm -hmm. those dimensions are smaller in size. These space dimensions are mm -hmm. smaller in size uh, than one ten billionth of a trillionth of the diameter of an electron, which probably explains why you haven't yeah. noticed them lately. Right. They're not, like, easily detectable, I guess. <laughs> well, they're wrapped up very tightly right. around the three big space dimensions, mm -hmm. but it's really the only way we can integrate the particle creation model, but the cosmic creation model. Right, so you're talking about the cosmic creation model, and, and first of all, this is probably a lot of new information for people, like these extra dimensions and these really tiny dimensions. Um, let's talk about the cosmic creation model, and then we'll lead people to where they can dig deeper, because this is a lot to unpack. Well, what this really implies is that the causal agent that brought the universe into existence, at a minimum, has the power to operate within 11 space-time dimensions. Mm. So it basically makes a point. And we look at the different religions of the world. What I, in fact, I noticed this when I was basically looking at the different religions before I became a Christian. I noticed that all but one of those religions squeeze God into a four-dimensional box. Right. And we humans can only visualize phenomena and dimensions we experience. So that was a tip to me. These other religions are inventions of human beings. But what I saw in the Bible were doctrines that required more than just those four space-time dimensions. So I said, this is a message that can come from this transcendent creator that brought the universe into existence. So when you're talking to someone who maybe is curious about dimensions or curious about science and space, like how would you incorporate this cosmic creation model and this, these extra dimensions into that conversation and really point to um, a transcendent God? Well, basically my goal is to communicate God is a whole lot bigger than you realize. Right. 
So that's the main point. Because right. people say, how can God do X? How can God do Y? Mm -hmm. Well, if he really is a God that transcends 10 space-time dimensions, we're looking at a really powerful supernatural creator. And therefore, things like raising people from the dead, that's not a big deal for someone who has that kind right. of power. Well, you know, a place that people can go to find more information, I know because I've helped edit this book, is Beyond the Cosmos. Right. And I think it's such a wonderful resource because it not only helps to kind of explain um, the extent of the cosmos and of the Creator, but also some of the common questions like, how can God hear all of our prayers? Right. And so when we think about extra dimensionality, that really helps to explain some of those questions. Yeah, God can do a lot if He's moving around, say, in two space-time dimensions. Right. And so, yeah, a lot of the theological questions we have find ready answers in a God that transcends right. the dimensions we experience. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Hugh. If you'd like to learn more about this really deep topic, go to reasons.org slash Ross, and you can find Beyond the Cosmos. You can get a free chapter of this book. I highly recommend it. So make sure you check it out. Again, reasons.org slash Ross.